Hi there, I'm very happy to welcome you at the Melob Zoom Camp course. You are entering monitoring model, so congrats, you made it so far through course. During this model, we are going to discuss how to monitor machine learning models in production. Let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Emily Jal, I'm CTO and co-founder at Evidently AI. At Evidently, we build a tool to analyze, validate and monitor machine learning models in production. Prior to Evidently, I spent many years helping companies to build and deploy machine learning based services, so the work we do in Evidently is heavily inspired by those experiences. Everyone knows that it's pretty hard to implement machine learning model itself, but it's even harder to build the production services with that model. Actually, very often when we take a look at the model's performance in time, we can see something like this. After some time, model's quality starts to degrade. How to account for it? Luckily, we have production software services for ages, so we can implement monitoring. So monitoring is the solution. When it comes to monitor of production service, it's very important to implement serious health monitoring because we need to make sure that our service works fine. We need to monitor metrics like uptime, memory usage, latency, and all these metrics help us to figure out whether our service is healthy. When it comes to machine learning models, we we need to add an extra layers related to data and model itself because we need to account to things like model's performance, data drift, constant drift and many many more. So in the next few slides I want to discuss with you what metrics do we need to add to our monitoring to make sure that we fully account to all the data and model related aspects of machine learning based services. So once again I want to underline that service health monitoring is a must. First of all we need to make sure that the service itself does work. If you can implement only a few metrics, I would definitely go for service health monitoring. Together with service health, we need to check how good our models are. So for doing this, the most straightforward set of metrics are models performance. The particular set of metrics heavily depend on the problem statement. If you work for some ranking algorithms, for example, in search engine optimization or some content recommender systems, you need to use some ranking metrics. If it comes to regression problems, you need to implement metrics which helps you to estimate regression quality, for example, mean absolute error or mean absolute percentage error. If it comes to classification problems, you might want to calculate something like log loss, especially if you work with probabilistic classification model, or maybe precision and recall. So it's all well-known metrics, it's easy to interpret them and the exact set of metrics depends on the problem statement. Pretty often we do not have our ground truth right there. There is some delay between the moment we need to generate some model's output and the moment we get this ground truth. So it's not possible to calculate all this quality or error-based metrics. So in this case we can use some proxy and in most cases when something is wrong with the model that's because there is some issues with our input data. So if we can implement some data quality or data integrity metrics, in most cases we can check, catch and fix these issues. What are those metrics? We can calculate pretty a lot of things. For example, we can cal calculate share or amount of missing values. We can check the count times and compare it with the types we assume to have for specific counts. We can check the value range for each column. There are a lot of things we can calculate and catch some bugs on the way. Even if there are no issues with data quality and data integrity, we still can face some problems. That happens because our models never works in the vacuum, right? It always interacts with some real world environment and in this environment things tend to change. So in this case I would suggest to calculate data drift and constant drift. Basically those are metrics which helps us to compare the distributions of input data, of model's output, of target function is something we had in our reference data set. I mean in the data set when we actually were happy with model's performance. So if there are some changes in the distributions, we can assume that something might go wrong with the model. Might not, it depends, but it can serve us as a very nice early signal of potential problems. I would say that these four groups of metrics, service health, model performance, data quality and integrity, and data and consumption 
is a very good starting point. But of course you do not have to limit yourself to those four groups. It always depends on the sensitivity of your case and the risks you have, together with resources of course. So just to inspire you to maybe add some more metrics, I want to touch some more groups. For example, if you have pretty wide audience or pretty diverse objects in your data sets, you might want to account for some quality metrics by segments. For example, you might split your objects by category, calculate quality metrics separately for each category and monitor them. If you work in a very sensitive domain area, for example, something related to animals or humans, maybe you work in healthcare or in finance, you might want to account for model bias and fairness. If the cost of each individual error is very high, you might want to monitor for outliers, because in this case you analyze each object individually and you have a chance to, for example, send specific objects to the manual review and by doing this reduce your risks. Finally, if you implement some recommender systems, you might want to generate some user's trust to the system, right? And for doing this, in many cases we share some information about how exactly we generated those or that recommendation with our users. In case you retrain and update your model automatically and pretty frequently, you might want to account for those explanations because you share it with users. So basically you can come up with many, many different customly implemented metrics, which helps you to cover some business risk and make sure that you at least understand this aspect of your data pipeline or model. So now let's move to the architecture point, point of our discussion and discuss batch and online serving models because the way how we deploy model might influence on the way how we implement monitoring. I would like to start from the architectural point of view. You are lucky enough that there are some production services already deployed in your company. Probably it means that you do have some monitoring implemented already and basically you could reuse the existing monitoring architecture for your machine learning model. For example, if you already have some production services which are monitored by the tools like Prometheus, which can pull some metrics from your production service, and then Grafana, which uses this Prometheus as the data source and then helps you to visualize some important metrics as the Grafana dashboard and then set some alerts, then you can reuse the existing scheme for your machine learning models. Even if you do not have a proper monitoring setup in your company, just because the only services you have are batch, you can still have something to start from. Pretty often there are some BI tools that are used in the company, for example some Tableau or Looker. If you have your models implemented as a batch pipeline, you can start to analyze them in these BI tools. So you can create a couple of dashboards, analyze each batch of the predictions of your model and at least decrease your risks by doing that. And later maybe implement something more automated. So it's always good to start from something you already have in the company and then increase the quality of the monitoring product by doing some iterations. Now I want to touch a topic about batch and non-batch models. There are a lot of metrics we just discussed before which can be calculated only in batch mode. Here I mean for example drink detection methods which expect to have two distributions and compare them between each other. In this case, you need to have your reference data, which can be, for example, validation data set or a previous batch where you are happy with the model performance. And you can take the data from the most recent batch as your current data, right? And compare distributions with the reference. It also works with quality metrics, for example, like precision and recall, because you also can calculate those metrics on top of your batch of data and analyze the results. So that's pretty straightforward. But when it comes to non-batch models, for example, operating as the REST API services, it can become a bit more complicated. When it comes to metrics like missing values or for example, range violations, you can pretty much calculate them in real time. But when it comes to metrics like data drift or model performance, sometimes it's much better to generate some batches of data and then calculate those metrics. Because, well, data drift is something you expect to calculate on top of the data sets, not like a single object, right? So in this case, I would suggest to use some window functions. You need to come up with the right window size, step size, and when you have your non-batch model, you could wait until you collect this small batch you need, then calculate all those metrics, and then 
store it somewhere. This basically means that even if you have your online machine learning based service, you still can do monitoring in batch and it makes a lot of sense when it comes to machine learning and data related metrics. So now it's time to discuss what we are going to build during this module. And I want to share some monitoring scheme I suggest us to build. Why so? I really like this scheme because it can be applied for both batch and non-batch machine learning models, so it's quite general. Let us take a look at this. We start from software service and in our case it can be batch or non-batch because we are going to build our monitoring on top of the logging. So we need to have prediction logs and as the monitoring we are going to create some pipeline which works of course in batch mode, so we are going to read our prediction logs by batch, analyze them, calculate some data and machine learning related metrics and store it in the database. Later we are going to use this database as a source for our dashboarding tool where we are going to create a dashboard containing several panels for different nice metrics. Particularly we are going to use the following services. Previously you created a service which predicts duration for the taxi trips, so we are going to use this service. You could implement those services as the REST API service or batch prediction pipeline, both works for us. We are going to simulate the production usage of our service and having some logs. So we are going to build our monitoring on top of the logs, which we are going to have as the local files in our file system. We are going to use a prefect to implement our monitoring jobs. So with help of prefect we are going to calculate some metrics. We are going to use evidently library as the evaluation layer, so we will calculate some metrics using this. Library we are not going to create any to write any code to calculate metrics or compare distributions. And finally we are going to load all the metrics we calculated with help of prefect in PostgreSQL database. Later we are going to use this database as the source for Grafana, where we will build a dashboard with nice panels related to data drift and maybe a couple of more nice data related metrics. So this will be a scheme we are going to implement and let me tell you once again that it's pretty general scheme and if you have prediction logs you could use this scheme for both batch and non-batch models, which is very convenient. Now it's time to practice. I hope you guys are excited to build some monitoring, so let's get down to it in the next video.